love you, George Floyd. I miss you so much. Sorry for your loss. Rest in peace, George Floyd. Rest in peace. DoorDash, Uber, and Instacart drivers are just some of the 1.3 million gig workers in California. Most of those drivers are affected by Prop 22, which not only guarantees them limited benefits and protections, but also tax on an extra charge to your order to pay that fee out. The rideshare saga in Minneapolis could have a new wrinkle. At tomorrow's council meeting, members will propose delaying the implementation of the new ordinance raising drivers' wages. Instead of starting on May 1st, it would begin July 1st. 95% of all Minnesota rideshare trips begin in the Twin Cities, so a departure from the metropolitan Minneapolis-St. Paul area would effectively end the app's presence in the state. You ever been to Minneapolis? Nope. Would it kill you to say something? I did. No. This is the time to reevaluate our dependence on to corporate giants that have based their entire economic model on paying their drivers the minimum wages. That's a geyser. I mean, whoa, caddy, stand back, man. Shit. I'm sitting here driving. She's got a ticket to ride, and she don't care. Ready, set. The latest front line in the battle over fair pay for rideshare drivers is in Minneapolis. Uber and Lyft have threatened to leave the city over a new ordinance that sets minimum wages for drivers. As special correspondent Fred DeSam Lazaro reports, it's leading to bigger questions about the state of the gig economy. The Freelancers Union helped pass laws in these cities that allow freelancers to reach out to their municipality for help if they're not getting paid on time. Shit. I'm sitting here driving, doing all the driving. Well, to be clear, we would prefer that Uber and Lyft not leave. We would prefer that they stay and they pay workers what they're owed. Two could play at that game, smart guy. We'll just see how you like it. Are you really going to leave on May 1st if this doesn't change? Yes. We wanted to make time for our partners at the state capitol to be able to pass a statewide policy that's really comprehensive, that includes the disability community, make sure that workers are protected across the state. It requires the companies to pay drivers at least $1.40 per mile and 51 cents per minute during rides. You know, keep our spirits up, fight the boredom of the road. You can't say one thing just in the way of conversation. Immediately after the ordinance passed, both Uber and Lyft said they would stop operating in Minneapolis on May 1st, the day the increases take effect. Shit. But they're not Uber laws. I mean, they're just... There are much bigger legal conversations about where employee protection should lie and what does control look like, and it affects a much bigger swath of workers than just folks who are using their phone, you know, to access a job. Really hope we can continue to work with uh, drivers and policymakers uh, in Minneapolis to continue to stay. Um, but, you know, if it doesn't make sense to operate a business, we won't operate a business. There are pros and cons to part-time jobs or freelancer gigs, but above all, it's clear that the gig economy as we know it seems here to stay. We hold the standard that workers should earn livable wages. We should not make exemptions for rideshare drivers because they're part of the gig economy. 
it's always dumb black people, dumb black liberals that just they're ruining entire cities to virtue signal. And the white ones are crazy too. But My baby don't care. My baby don't care. My baby don't care. My baby don't care. Sending out fine, but I don't think it was Uber leaving. To the legacy of our ancestors and how black people have come from slavery to being the most prosperous black people in the world through capitalism. That's what it means to be a good parent. The culture changed. The culture changed. The culture changed. 